You're welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we want to look at how to discuss your results. So you're doing your write-up and you've already gone through your research. You've gotten your data analyzed and you have your results. You've interpreted the results and you want to discuss the results. How do you go about that? This is what this video seems to achieve. Now let's dig right in. Now before we start with discussing the results, I want us to quickly look at the components of your results section. The first thing I want us to take notice of is that every results from a thesis research should have a demographic characteristics of your participant. Why is this important? So even though the demographic characteristics of the participants or the subjects might not necessarily be an objective of the study, it is necessary because it helps to know that your demographic variables were evenly balanced. And also in the process of when you were doing your random allocation of the subjects to a particular um, experimental or control group, there was that random allocation. That is where it is necessary. So we want to know that there is no bias in terms of choosing your participant and also putting them in various groups. And that is why demographic findings are so important in your study. Now, other important variables could also be, if necessary, your anthropometric indices. For instance, if you measured BMI, if you measured things like the high blood pressure and what have you, but it's not every study that you would have to do that. So um, what it means is that your demographic characteristics should be there irrespective of the objective or the aim of the study. Now, the second component of your results section is answering your research questions or your study objectives. So your results should be able to answer your study questions. And the study questions, as you already know, stems from your objective. So if you want to know the prevalence of malaria in a particular population, then your research question will be, what is the prevalence of malaria in that particular study population? And your results should be able to answer that question. And so these are the two components of your results section, the demographic and then the results that are answering each of the research questions that you have. Now, it is based on these that you are going to discuss your results. Your discussion is going to be based on these findings that you get from your data. So we want to know what are the guidelines in discussing your results. The first thing that I want you to note down is that you don't repeat the results in the discussion session. When I say that you don't repeat the results in a discussion, exactly as you presented it in the results section, you shouldn't do the same in a discussion. So you could capture the details of the results in putting it in a particular manner, which we will look at shortly. Now, another thing is that you have to order your discussion to be consistent with your study objectives. That is also very important, either your study objectives or the research question. And so if, for instance, your first study objective or research question is on prevalence of malaria and you want to know the second objective that you want to you wanted to look at, for instance, is on the perception of the people on the use of mosquito nets. So it means that when you are discussing your results, the first thing you need to capture is the prevalence. After you've captured information on the demographics, the, the second thing is the prevalence. Then the third one will be the perception of the people on the use of mosquito nets. All right, so that is just an example. So you need to order your discussion to flow in that order so that anybody who is reading your discussion using your objectives or study of study questions will be able to follow through. Now, the third thing I want you to note down also is that explain how the results answer the question under your study objectives. You need to explain how does the results that you got how do they answer the study questions? Were they able to answer the study questions? You need to capture it within your results. That is in the discussion as well. Now, the third thing or the fourth thing I want you to note down also is that you need to also emphasize what is new in your study or what is different or what is important about your results. So there are instances that you might be doing a study that has been done in a, another population where your population is different from the other population in which you, the study was conducted. So what new did you find? Or what different did you find from, from the other study that has already been conducted? Or even if you found the same thing, what is so important about your results that it should be published? And you need to emphasize, lay emphasis on that. 
the last guideline i want you to take note of is that you need to avoid biased language at all costs and also avoid biased citation of previous work what do i mean by biased citation you don't have to use only one study to discuss your results no you need to use different studies so there are instances that there will be a particular study that agrees with your findings you need to find another study which might disagree with your findings and you explain where the disparity comes from it's so important that you don't use only one citation to discuss your results there are numerous of work that might have been done around your study questions or your objective and you need to dig them out and inculcate them or involve them in the discussion of your results in discussing your results what are you supposed to do we've looked at the guidelines but what are you supposed to do in discussing your results the first thing is that you need to explain your results in relation to the study objectives or research questions i've already talked about this and you need to emphasize this explain your results in relation to the study objectives we want to understand what have you found in the results section you will be presenting the results as they appear in the tables you don't explain you don't do anything on the results you will just be interpreting the tables so if there were 75 percent who were males and the rest of the 25 percent who were females you state that in the results section by way of interpretation but when you come to the discussion of the results which we intend to do then you need to explain why is it that there are more females than males in your study population and what does this mean to your study it's important you explain that now you also present how your results agrees or disagrees with previous work and this is the most important part of your discussion presenting your results and letting us understand how your study or your findings agrees or disagrees with previous work now i've stated here that if it agrees with your previous work then with other previous work then that is fine okay you state it and it agrees it is consistent with existing literature that have been done in your study area that is okay that is adding to the body of knowledge what has already been propounded what has already been found and it's so important that as the day goes by further research is done in that same area in order to add a body of knowledge to what has already been found and that is allowed but in a situation where it does not agree with previous work here is where you need to take some time to explain what did you find in your work or what is in your work that made you get findings that are different from what is in the existing literature so there could be a, a situation where about 50 work that have been done in this same research area they are all getting the same results but your results seems to be different now it is also allowed you don't have to manipulate your results and explain it to suit what has already been found you need to state your results even if it does not agree with existing literature but the work that you need to do here is that you need to explain and give reasons and here i have outlined some of the reasons you can do that can help you the first reason is that you need to take note or notify us if there were certain limitations which you will use those limitations to explain why you are getting inconsistent results with existing literature the first one has to do with the sample size so you need to compare your sample size with the sample size of the literature that is existing probably they used either a smaller or a larger sample size now all these can bring disparity in your research findings another thing also is that were there any problems with carrying out the method as originally planned so you said that you were performing a prospective cohort study using quantitative approach were you able to follow it systematically throughout or there were some hitches somewhere and that could be the reason why you are getting inconsistent results and it's so important that you come clean with this because probably the existing literature that has already been found should be what agreed and you are finding something which does not agree with it so literature should also have yours in there trying to explain that it is because you couldn't follow through your um, study plan as you have originally outlined that is why you are getting inconsistent results and it doesn't mean that the information in the existing literature is wrong and so you help the body of knowledge or existing literature to come clean on that regard now another limitation you could use as an explanation is that was it that there was not enough men or there was not enough women 
in the study or there was not enough in terms of any variations that you were looking at okay this could bring disparity as far as existing literature is concerned maybe you want to know um causes the causes of male factor infertility and you sampled you did a random sampling of more participants where it could be males or females now the existing literature that has been done found out that male factor infertility is as a result of issues concerning men even though there were females that were recruited into the study here is the situation in your study you did not get enough men to consent to your study and so you got more females than men and as a result you realize that most of the females were given reports that made the issue come from women instead of men now this can be a disparity and give a reason why your resource is inconsistent with existing literature and you need to come clean with this another reason you could also give is that were there unanticipated amount of side effects or pain this comes to play when you are administering a particular um drug or administering a particular um, yes i will use drug as an example and there was an unanticipated amount of side effect which you did not take critical look at and so probably some maybe if you are using mice or if you are using certain animals for your study because there was so much pain or there were so much side effects most of the animals could not withstand the dosage that you gave to them even though it was not it was just a normal dosage given within a normal range now because of that some of the animals died or some of the animals did not respond as they were supposed to now this can bring disparity in your study and can lead to why your study does not agree with existing literature and this can be an explanation you could also give another thing is that was there a low response rate and this is something the researcher cannot do anything about obviously there is an inclusion criteria and also ethically your study participants if they are humans should consent to the study but here is the case where you did not get so many people to consent to the study and even for those who consented to the study there was a low response rate after they've consented to participate and because of that the results becomes inconsistent with existing literature or was it the failure to look at a crucial time interval in order to conduct the study so everything was was okay but because you couldn't choose a particular time to conduct your study maybe the weather conditions were different from the weather conditions in which the previous work was conducted this can bring disparity and lead to why your results is inconsistent with existing literature so these are some of the things you need to look at and you need to include all of these reasons in your discussion as you are discussing your results so in this video we are looking at what do you need in conducting your discussion the first thing that i would list here is that obviously you need your results and the results should be interpreted and also you don't need to repeat the words or the the, the manner in which you discuss you you actually interpreted the results in the discussion and we will look at that shortly now another thing that you need i recommend that you should get a referencing software in the next slide i will show you some recommended referencing softwares that you can use and then you need to get a lot of literature in which you are going to use to discuss your result and obviously you need to get a cup of coffee sit down and then continue writing now these are some examples of references softwares i would recommend i love using mendly because it comes free and it is quite handy if you are able to get the mendly web importer and the mendly um, word importer or mendly site then you'll be able to reference your work you could also use zotero zotero so both mendly and zotero are free um, apps that you could download from the internet endnote on the other hand is not free you need to buy it to get a full access to it so if you want a, a more advanced references software then you'll be looking at endnote though it is not free but mainly and then zotero are free so if you're a student that you want to do your work quickly then i'll recommend you use mainly or Zot zotero so these references softwares are so important because it helps you to put your references together 
and they can format your references to suit the reference requirement from your institution. If you want Vancouver, if you want APA, if you want Harvard, any of the references software, the software can generate and also format it to suit the referencing requirement. And it will gather all your references in the bibliography. So any reference that you use from the beginning of your work to the end of the work, if it is in the same document, then as soon as you click insert bibliography, it will gather all the in-text reference and present the external references to you. And it makes your work so easy. So I always recommend students to have a referencing software by their side as they are doing the entire work. And most importantly, as they are discussing their results. 